Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Wednesday, March 15th, 2023. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's Word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. Yesterday, we read the first chapter of Solomon's book, Ecclesiastes, and we said that Solomon was going to be conducting a sort of experiment through his experiences in life. He's going to try all kinds of different things to see if he could find meaning in any of them. Today, Solomon is going to look for meaning in pleasure, in possessions, and in work. And he's going to conclude that those things in and of themselves, apart from God, cannot provide meaning. I said to myself, go ahead, I will test you with pleasure. Enjoy what is good. But it turned out to be futile. I said about laughter, it is madness. And about pleasure, what does this accomplish? I explored with my mind the pull of wine on my body, my mind still guiding me with wisdom, and how to grasp folly until I could see what is good for people to do under heaven during the few days of their lives. I increased my achievements. I built houses and planted vineyards for myself. I made gardens and parks for myself and planted every kind of fruit tree in them. I constructed reservoirs for myself from which to irrigate a grove of flourishing trees. I acquired male and female servants and had slaves who were born in my house. I also owned livestock large herds and flocks, more than all who were before me in Jerusalem. I also amassed silver and gold for myself and the treasure of kings and provinces. I gathered male and female singers for myself and many concubines, the delights of men. So I became great and surpassed all who were before me in Jerusalem. My wisdom also remained with me. All that my eyes desired, I did not deny them. I did not refuse myself any pleasure, for I took pleasure in all my struggles. This was my reward for all my struggles. When I considered all that I had accomplished and what I had labored to achieve, I found everything to be futile in the pursuit of the wind. There was nothing to be gained under the sun. Then I turned to consider wisdom, madness, and folly. For what will the king's successor be like? He will do what has already been done. And I realize that there is an advantage to wisdom over folly, like the advantage of light over darkness. The wise person has eyes in his head, but the fool walks in darkness. Yet I also knew that one fate comes to both of them. So I said to myself, what happens to the fool will also happen to me. Why then have I been overly wise? And I said to myself that this is also futile. For just like the fool, there is no lasting remembrance of the wise, since the days, since in the days to come, both will be forgotten. How is it that the wise person dies just like a fool? Therefore, I hated life, because of the work that was done under the sun was distressing to me. For everything is futile and a pursuit of the wind. I hated all my work that I labored at under the sun because I must leave it to the one who comes after me. And who knows whether he will be wise or a fool. Yet he will take over all my work that I labored at skillfully under the sun. This too is futile. So I began to give myself over to despair concerning all my work that I had labored at under the sun. When there is a person whose work was done with wisdom, knowledge, and skill, and he must give his portion to a person who has not worked for it. This too is futile and wrong and a great wrong. For what does a person get with all his work and all his efforts that he labors at under the sun? For all his days are filled with grief and his occupation is sorrowful. Even at night, his dream, his mind does not rest. This too is futile. There is nothing better for a person than to eat, drink, and enjoy his work. I have seen that even this is from God's hand, because he who can eat and who can enjoy life apart from him? For to the person who is pleasing in his sight, he gives wisdom, knowledge, and joy. 
but to the sinner he gives the task of gathering and accumulating in order to give to the one who is pleasing in God's sight. This too is futile and a pursuit of the wind. We are reading Paul's first letter to his young colleague in the ministry, Timothy. Today, we're going to read chapter four, in which Paul gives Timothy more instructions for carrying out his ministry. Now, the Spirit explicitly says that in later times, some will depart from the faith, paying attention to deceitful spirits and the teachings of demons, through the hypocrisy of liars whose consciences are seared. They forbid marriage and demand abstinence from foods that God created to be received with gratitude by those who believe and know the truth. For everything created by God is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, since it is sanctified by the word of God and by prayer. If you point these things out to the brothers and sisters, you will be a good servant of Christ Jesus, nourished by the words of the faith and the good teaching that you have followed, but have nothing to do with pointless and silly myths. Rather, train yourself in godliness, for the training of the body has limited benefit, but godliness is beneficial in every way, since it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. This saying is trustworthy and deserves full acceptance. For this reason, we labor and strive because we have put our hope in the living God, who is the savior of all the world, especially those who believe. Command and teach these things. Don't let anyone despise your youth, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Until I come, give your attention to public reading, exhortation, and teaching. Don't neglect the gift that is in you. It was given to you through a prophecy with the laying on of hands and by the council of elders. Practicing these things, or practice these things, be committed to them so that your progress may be evident to all. Pay close attention to your life and your teaching. Persevere in these things, for in doing this, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.